One big elephant. Oh my goodness, where did you come from? Man, you're one great looking elephant though. Look at you, don't you look all proud standing there in the middle of my map page. You know what? I like elephants, you know what? So we're gonna make you a little bit smaller, but we won't disrespect your size because we know you're really big. We'll just cover you over this fabric here. Maybe we can get you to fit in the fabric. Get in there, yay, all right. Ooh, don't you look great there? All right, my friends, Mr. War here. If I didn't introduce myself already, I'm here again. Just checking in. Looks like we're doing some a brand new chapter. Chapter 4.1, I reckon. That's right, good old multiplication patterns with decimals. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. And it says the essential question is how can patterns help you place a decimal point in a product? You know what? I seem to remember that we talked a little bit about this in a previous video, and but yet here we are. Okay, it also mentions here that we might be looking at mathematical practices 4, 7, and 8. I've yet to memorize all those yet. Uh, I believe 8, if I recall, has something this is the last one. But we'll get into that as we get into it, okay? But first things first, my friends, let's go ahead and unlock that problem. And it states... Cindy is combining equal sized rectangles from different fabric patterns to make a postage stamp quilt with an elephant on it. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, and each rectangle has an area of, ooh, looks like 75 hundredths of a square inch. If she uses 1,000 rectangles to make the quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? Okie dokie. Well, it says use the pattern to find the product. Okay, let's look at the pattern. We'll bring this down. It says here we have 1 times, of course, 0.75. That's the identity property of multiplication. We just simply get zap, 0 0.75. Now, when you multiply it by 10, look what happens. Ooh, it looks like that the decimal place has moved to the right. Now, we have 7.5. It's moved one place value. Because it's 10 times greater. Makes sense? And if you look at 7.5 and 0 0.75, you can tell that that is 10 times greater. Now what happens when you multiply by 100? Hmm, hence the pattern is, now it's going to move two decimal places. How convenient. How easy. It's like 1 0 of that 10. 1 power of 10 means 1 0. It's one place value. Now we have 100. It's two place values for two zeros because it's two powers of 10. And now we come to 1,000, it's 3 powers of 10 times that 0.75, and look what happens. We moved two decimal places, we had to move one more for 3, but there wasn't a digit there. And then that means that number is going to get 10 times greater, so we're going to add on a 0. So the quilt then will have an area of, based on that 1,750 square inches. Yeah, like it, huh? Are you loving this math? Living, breathing, mathematicus. Yes, math, I'm telling you. Now, let's get into some good problem set here. It says, as you multiply by increasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? Ooh, well, we just talked about that. See, the decimal point moves like one place to the right as I multiply by each power of 10. That's basically what happened. So let's write that. How about that, eh? Supersonic speed, I write so quickly. <laughs> hey, so anyways, the next one says place value patterns can be used to find the product of a number and the decimals. 0.1 and 0 0.1. I'm sorry, not 0 0.1. 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. I stand corrected. Yes. Now, this is example one. It says, Jorge is making a scale model of the Willis Tower in Chicago for a theater set. The height of the tower is 1,353 feet. Well, that's pretty crazy. That is really tall. Now, if the model is one hundredth of the actual size of the building, how tall is the model? Okay. Well, what do we got going on here? Now, if, I don't know if we should be doing this here first. What do we have here? What fraction of the actual size of the building is the model? Oh, yeah, that's in the problem. We already determined that is 1 100th here. Yes, it's right there. 
write the fraction as a decimal. Okay, we could do that. That's 0 0.01. Be very careful here because we want to make sure we have it into the hundreds place. And that's what that equals. Okay, now we come over here and it shows the identity property again. 1 times 1,353 equals 1. Okay, and then we have 0.1 times, ah, that's your quantity, 1,353. Now look what happens here. It's equal to, look at, 135.3. Now what happened? Well, this is interesting. The decimal place moved to the left. Of course, I'm kind of cheating there. The little red arrow kind of helped me out, right? <laughs> well, actually, point 0.1, though, is one-tenth. And when we're talking about one-tenth of a number, the opposite is happening. We're moving to the left. It's almost multiplying by one-tenth. I don't know if this, this is not here in the lesson, but I'm going to teach you this anyway. But when you multiply by one-tenth, that's the same as, get this, as dividing by 10. All right? Because they're called inverse operations. It just means it's like the opposite. Multiplying by one-tenth is the same as dividing by, by 10. Now we have one-hundredth. So again, the decimal place is going to be moving two times this time. So now it's going to go to 13.53. So it's one hundredth of that amount. And that of, of course, we know means multiply. Jorge's model of the Willis Tower is, oh, now we have our number. The answer's right here. It is 13 and 53 hundredths, well, feet tall. Sometimes we just say 13.53, 53, 53 five, feet tall. Blah, blah. I'm just learning how to speak, okay. Yes, I'm sometimes I'm stumbling over my words. Very good, very nice. I like. I do like this. So this is the model. See, we're taking a huge tower building. Maybe you've seen these. Uh, you know, engineers and architects, they do this. Um, they basically can create a model of what they're going to build. Pretty cool. Okay, look at number two here. As you multiply by decreasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? That's interesting to say the decreasing powers of 10 because they are all powers of 10, but these are decreasing, 1 tenth, 1 one hundredth. So, well, the decimal point uh, moved like one place, okay, to the left each time. We multiplied by a power of uh, 10 or, well, each time we multiplied by that decreasing decimal place value, which is what this is going on here, left and right. All right, so let me go ahead and put this in written form. Here we go. Like I just stated, decimal point moves one place to the left um, as I multiply by those decreasing decimal place value, by decreasing de de decimal place value, or you could say by decreasing powers of 10. Can you say that? They mentioned that here, decreasing powers of 10. That's fine means the same thing to me. All righty. Are we rec ready for the next page? Bring it on. That's what I say. Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. Mr. War, why are you talking that way? I don't know. I just am. Hey, it's one of those kind of days. It's a happy, well, for me, it's a happy Monday. I don't know when you were going to be watching this video. It's Monday. Okay. Example two. I'm going to underline it. It says three friends are selling items at an arts and crafts store. Can you believe it? And Josie makes $45.75 selling jewelry. She's rich. Mark makes 100 times as much as Josie makes by selling his custom furniture. He's even richer. Carlos, who on the other hand, makes a tenth of the money Mark makes by selling paintings. Hmm, interesting. How much money does each friend make? So we have three people here. It says Mark makes 100 times as much as Josie makes by selling his custom furniture. Okay. And then Carlos makes one tenth of the money Mark makes by, oh, by selling paintings. Got it. See, I had to do that. Good old, ooh, this is from another math program. RDW, I need to read. I try to draw, and then I try to write. Right. Or if you want to just think of it as you read the problem. That's like a first step in any problem solving. And you might actually have to reread. There's nothing wrong with read reading. It doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to do the math. It just means it's all about we want to get our understanding. All right. So Josie, there's her forty-five dollars and seventy-five cents, and this is Mark blank times 
45. Okay, I guess they're trying to get us to go back at the problem and look at this, saying that Mark makes 100 times as much. So we could probably put 100 in there. So yes, one thing about this program, I don't know, always having to figure out what goes in the blank. You have to think the problem out. And so uh, let's just keep going down. Let's work it out. This here we know is $45.75 because, again, it is the class. It is the identity property of multiplication. Now we multiply by 10. Remember what happened? That decimal place moves. That's right, when you multiply by 10. So that changes the number. My goodness, this number multiplied by 10 is going to be $457. And oh no, there's just a 5 there. We automatically add on a 0. Why do we do that? Because we're talking about money. And money is always done in the cent or the 100. So we have to have two decimal places there. Here we have 100 times. Oh my goodness, now that's going to go two places. We're talking rich, 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 4,575. You look at that, it goes all the way. Carlos, on the other hand, okay, let's see how much he makes. He apparently is only making, oh, one tenth, so let's write one tenth. And notice that when we do this kind of multiplying, that we're not using fractions here. We are using decimals because this is about multiplying decimals, so we're not going to put one tenth there in that slot. Here we have our, what was the money that uh, was one tenth of the amount of money that. Do, 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 Mark makes. And Mark, oh my goodness, makes 4575 That's how much we know now. So that's going to be times that amount. Let's write that in there. 4575 Think. Okay, I got my thinking brain on. So if I take this times something equals that. All right. This is where I get a little lost. Um... Since all of these are starting off with that identity property, is that what we're supposed to do here? Yeah, see, this is where it gets a little, I don't know. I, I guess they're just trying to get you to think that's what one times that is. And then, of course, here, this is Carlos, and so that's one-tenth times that same amount. It seems like we're rewriting many, many things. And because... The decimal place here, remember, when we're multiplying by a decreasing power of 10, and let's just say that a decreasing power of 10 would be 1 tenth, okay, it would definitely be 100, definitely would be 1,000, and you know, you can keep on going, okay, we could do 10 thousands, I don't think we go out that far, so that means the decimal place is going to move to the left, and since the decimal is automatically there, because it's always at the end of a whole number, because you could always put 0. 0.0. That means our new total is $457.50. I believe that is correct. Is that one tenth? That Yes, that seems reasonable. So Josie makes $45.75. Mark makes, oh my goodness, we're repeating this again. Again, we need to write it. Yes, with a comma. And Carlos makes... Four, oh, and you know what? I, I guess I can't be too picky because I did say that it's about read, draw, and write. We didn't do any, do any drawing this time, but we have to make our statement. That's what the write is all about and making your statement. All right, let's move on. Whoa, <laughs> that was a pretty cool purple line. Okay, yeah, whatever, Mr. Wara. Let's move on. Okay, now let's just try this. Complete the pattern. Ooh, I like these. Now, this can be very confusing for people here. When you wave 10 raised to the zero power. My goodness, I could try to explain this to you. It's for fifth grade, I'm sorry. It's way too advanced for it to make sense. Most students that I explain this to, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not going to waste my time. You'll learn this later on, probably in middle school. So this is what I'm just going to tell you. Any number raised to the zero power, okay, is just equal to one. Okay, you can Google this and look this up. So to save you the hassle, just remember that any number, even if you have 23, any number, I'm sorry, oop, raised to the zero power is equal to one. So we're just going to write, in this case, since this is one then, times that 4.78, our answer is going to be 4.78. That's all you need to know. Now with this, this is a little bit different. 10 raised to the first power is 10. 
okay? 10 raised to the first power is 10 because the one's letting us know that we're going to multiply the base. This guy here is called the base, okay? This guy over here is called the exponent. And so 10 times that means we're going to be moving the decimal place one time, giving us 47.8. We come here, 10 raised to the second power means not 10 times 2. A lot of us fall into that trap. No, don't be one of those people that fall for the trap. Okay, sorry. Now, it means 10 times 10. It means the base is being multiplied by itself two times. So that's 10 times 10 is 100. Look at that. That gives us 478. If you move the decimal place two, two times over, 10 raised to the third power, of course, we have 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So we're going to move it 1, 2, 3. We're going to end up with 4,780. How are we doing, huh? Are you with me? 38 times 1, 38. Oh, they're trying to trick us, huh? They're not giving us that... Uh, Base 10 with the exponent. Said so we know that's one tenth. Decimal place going one place to the left. 3.8. And then here it's going two times. So we're going to end up with 0 0.38. You could put just 0.38, but the zero always helps us out see the decimal. Okay? So that's the big key there. Share and show. Okay? Complete the pattern. Oh, we did a lot of that already. This raised. Uh, sorry, to the third power means 1,000. So we're going to end up going 1, 2. Oh, we're going to throw a 0 in the end. We're going to end up 17,040. And then think the decimal point moves one place to the blank for each increasing power of 10. And that's going to be to the right. And if it was decreasing, then it would go to the left. So this is really what you need to kind of lock away. I'm just going to write a random number. Remember when you multiply by these they're increasing that's considered increasing right they usually aren't going to take you much beyond a thousand whereas these if we write them this way are decreasing okay and so if it's increasing you have to go to the right because that's going to make that lumber that blah, 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 blah. Okay. that's going to make the number larger right it's going to make it from 23 to 235 that lets you know you're doing the increase in power of 10. Uh, then over here, if you're doing it decreasing, that's going to make the numbers 10 times less, right? You're going to 2.3. Okay, my friends, I know, I know, I know. It's like Mr. Wara, it's another video. It was cool. Like, faster than Flash Gordon. Okay, maybe you've never heard of Flash Gordon. I mean, faster than Dash of the Incredible. Yes, it went that fast, but as always, please live longer.